Welcome, welcome everyone to a casted game of Age of Empires 4. And today, spawning on the west side of the map, playing in Teal, we've got Crackity here, playing as the Byzantines. And his opponent on the east side of the map, playing in pink, we've got Kenoki, playing as the Jean d'Arc faction. Welcome, welcome everyone to Cliffside. That is the map for today, a new map for Age of Empires 4 with the uh, Sacred Sites in the middle. Cliffs in the middle, gold in the middle, relics in the middle, everything in the middle. And uh, pretty wallable, actually, to be fair, in the middle. We shall see what it has in store for us in the middle. Lots of things happening in the middle, but enough of the word middle, because uh, what we really want to focus on is the Byzantines today. We have talked a lot about the Jeanne d'Arc. We will cover her a little bit more detail later on in the game for sure. But I really am interested in the Byzantines. Super excited for this uh, showcase of the Sultan's Ascend DLC. Uh, a new civilization. We always love new civilizations. And the Byzantines are one of such new civilizations. We've got the cistern already set up. One of uh, probably many to come. Now, what happens with the Byzantines? You set up a, a cistern network. You connect them with aqueducts. Uh, it costs stone to make. And what it is, you get water levels. So you can see a little number one there. Now, that will increase as you connect more cisterns together via the aqueducts. Now, what that does, well, three main things, really. You've got Conscriptio, which increases the military production rate depending on your water level. You've got Dialecticus, where the research rate is increased, again, depending on your water level. And you guessed it, depending on your water level, you get Presidium, where building damage taken is reduced by, you know, it scales with your water level. Now, what's really key is that you can actually toggle each system independently. So you might have another system like elsewhere on the map where there's a blacksmith under the influence of it. And you might switch that to Dialecticus to get advantage of the research rate. So something to consider for the Byzantines, lots of base building involved. Uh, but what I'd love to really talk about is olive oil. Now, olive oil is a resource for the Byzantines specific to them. No other civilization can get it. And they get it via their equivalent of the farms, the olive grove. That's what the Byzantines get. They don't get farms, they get olive groves. Uh, but more importantly, they also gather olive oil from other food sources. For example, the berries. Speaking of uh, olive oil, the Grand Winery, landmark of choice for the Byzantines, is an interesting one. Acts as a monastery, but, but the nearby villagers gather 60% more olive oil from the berry bushes and olive gro groves, rather. So you can put the olive groves around this and it, it's, it's, it's incredibly good because it acts as a drop-off building as well for food. And it also means that relic garrison generate olive oil instead of gold. So you can see this landmark is very much geared towards olive oil and this game mechanic, this eco mechanic. Now you might be wondering, okay, okay, I've got olive oil. Now what do I do with it? Well, you can spend it on mercenaries. That's right. You can contract in mercenaries through the mercenary house. And uh, it's a really, really nice thing. Um, I know the overlay is a little bit scuffed there, but yeah, it is what it is. In any case, you can build the mercenary house and, and what you can do, you can select three different contracts. Now, you can go up with the Eastern Mercenary Contract, you can choose the Western Mercenary Contract, you can choose the Silk Road Contract. And it, depending on what you wanted to get in terms of units, you've got to choose one, right? So um, you can only choose one contract per game, so you've got to choose wisely, and it locks you in for those units. So if you go for the Eastern Mercenary Contract, you can get Keshix, you can get Gulam, you can get Tower Elephant, depending on the age that you're in. And you can get the Longbowman, the Landscalator, the Streltsy with the Western Mercenary Contract, and the Silk Road Contract gives you the Javelin Thrower, the Camel Rider, and the Grenadier. So it gives the versatility really there for the Byzantines. It's a very nice mechanic. And uh, hopefully we'll be seeing a lot of that in action as the game wears on. Now, speaking of action, let's take a look at what's happening on the Jeanne d'Arc side of things. Scout heading forward. Now, where is Jeanne d'Arc? Where is she? Because there should be a little crown on her. There it is. She's building, working hard at building that school of cavalry. All by herself, by the way. She's a very hard worker. And uh, the thing about Jeanne d'Arc is that she has some uh, good journeys ahead of her. Lots of choices to be made. She can uh, capture sacred sites and participate participate rather in uh, combat, which is very, very nice. She's got an honorable heart. She can regenerate her health and also take less damage in level 3 by 50%, which increases to a minus 66% damage taken at level 4. Now, we talked about how she's a very talented builder. She builds buildings 33% faster. And uh, not only that, at level 2, she actually transfers or at least shares that capability with her comrades. Um, so it's a very, very nice bonus. Well, not only this, I'm finding it difficult to select her, I'm afraid, but it is what it is. There we are, got her. Um, she has a couple of routes to be upgraded in terms of the level. So when she does level up, she's got a couple of options. Uh, she can indeed go and choose some weapons. So she can take a look at this. If you take a look at this, you can become a hunter. She gets a bow. 
she can become a woman at arms, she gets a sword. And if she goes for the bow and becomes a hunter, she gets access to an ability specific for that kind of line of, of development. Now just bear in mind, if, you, if she becomes a hunter, she will at the next level become a mounted archer, at the next level above that become a markswoman. Oh, knight gonna dive in on the villagers. Okay, Spearman gets involved. But a villager might go down here on the berries for the Byzantines, I'm afraid. Nope, backs away. Manages to keep them alive and the knight backs away for now. About to get another wraparound though, potentially. Anyway, as that happens, um, so yeah, if she becomes a woman at arms though, then she naturally progresses into becoming a knight at the next level. And then she then becomes a blast cannon at the level after that. But if she becomes a hunter, she gets an ability. It's divine restoration. If she becomes woman at arms, she gets a different ability, the holy wrath. You can't cross them. So if she becomes a hunter, she cannot get Holy Wrath. If she becomes Woman at Arms, she can't get Divine Restoration. You can see what it does with Divine Restoration there. Gives the uh, the nearby allies a little bit of a blessing. Instant healing as an ability. Very, very nice. And uh, the Holy Wrath unleashes a powerful area effect damage coming out. Takes a villager there on the stone there, I think that was. Yeah, does get that villager kill. Loses the Spearman. So you can see actually, Jean d'Arc has been upgraded to the Hunter. So she's going to wield a bow and arrow. So that covers the little uh, abilities that she gets for the level 1 upgrades, and uh, we'd love to see it. We might focus... Okay, let's let's talk about the next level up from that. So, she can choose between champion champions or rider champions. And regardless of what choice she makes, though, she does get the galvanize the righteous passive ability that stays with her. The companions close to Jean gets 1 armor and also 10% damage. So we see uh, damage coming in. Takes a villager there with the knight. Nice pick off there by Kenoki. As the action continues, the knight's going to back off and out. Hachi has chivalry, so a nice early upgrade for Kenoki with the chivalry. Healing up those knights, making sure he's trying not to lose any. Oh, you saw that little action there for the hunter ability there for Jean d'Arc. Gets Divine Arrow and does a decent amount of damage there with the shot. Gets Divine Restoration, as we talked about. Also has Consecrate, which actually um, can be put on buildings to reduce the food cost by 25%. Whether that be the School of Cavalry, Town Center, you name it, you can do it. But anyway... We've got the passive ability galvanize the righteous and um you can see the champion champions she can actually train champions at the keep it's kind of like man at arms basically but she can also get the rider champions to get cavalry um with both of these abilities though she can rally three of those units that she's chosen to her side obviously champion champions gives her champions and rider champions gives her the riders now where we go from here is the next level above that um and we've had a lot of the initial aggression in the match, I think, so far. Although we might just spot what this knight gets up to. A bit more aggression, we shall see. In any case, the next level above that will be the Field Commander or Gunpowder Monarch. Now, regardless of what you chose for the champions, you can actually choose either Field Commander or Gunpowder Monarch. Or takes another villager there with the knight, but the knight probably will go down, does go down in the end. Um, but certainly, yeah, so you can choose either of them. And uh, what that does, Field Commander though, if you choose Field Commander, when you do level up the next time, you automatically get the ability for Strength of Heaven. It's an ultimate ability. If you choose Gunpowder Monarch, then you automatically get um, Valorous Inspiration in the next tech up. Now what Field Commander does, it's, it gives you a rally call of seven of the chosen companions from the previous level. So if you, if you chose Champion Champions, you get seven champions. If you chose the Riders, you get seven Riders. Um, and as you can see, that gives you the Strength of Heaven ability in the next tier. Now, Gunpowder Monarch gives you only three of those chosen champions, but you get a powerful cannon to help you on the battlefield. And as we said earlier, it gives you Valorous Inspiration. Now, you might be wondering, well, Farmy, Farman, what is Valorous Inspiration? What is the Field Commander? Let's take a look. Strength of Heaven. Jean chooses a unit to bless, bestowing them with incredible strength and durability, 300 health, 4 melee and ranged armor, and plus 300 damage. Percent, that is, 300% damage. But if you've chosen Field Commander, that's what you get. If you chose Gunpowder Monarch, then you get Valorous Inspiration, which increases the attack speed of all units within four tiles by 50% for four seconds. So, there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's Jean of Arc in a nutshell. A really good run through of that unit, actually. I was, uh, I was very happy with that summary, I've got to say, because it is complicated. If you look at the tech tree, it's not all hugely intuitive. You actually have to kind of go into the game a little bit to figure it out. But you can see a lot of oil of oil in play for Crackety. It might do well to get a mercenary house and choose that contract uh, to start pumping out some mercenary units. Now, Kanoki 
is under a lot of pressure because Crackety here, what he's done is gone for a second town center, build it quite close, so he's going to be establishing quite a villager lead. Kanoki, on the other hand, stuck with one town center, going for a fast castle, and they're going up with the guild hall. So hopefully, why well, he seems like he's playing that. I'm a bit, I'm a bit skeptical about this decision because, like, the Royal Institute might be a better option here because he's playing it quite. I mean, economy-wise, it's quite minimized, right? He's only got one town center. Don't forget, by the way, that this town center doesn't work like the French one. This guy, this uh, town center has to take 20 seconds to train a villager, whereas the French train the villagers in 18 seconds, 1-8. So bear that in mind as well. Of course, you know, get Jean d'Arc to compensate for that. But certainly, I mean, he's going to play the long game, maybe. Look to try and get some uh, another town center. It's Toggle to Stone, which is an interesting choice. Uh, we'll have to see how Jean d'Arc plays this one now. He might be looking to put a lot of aggression in the castle age now, deal, deal some damage if he can. Might have to quickly, because that villager lead is starting to escalate quite nicely for Kano uh, for Crackety, rather. There it is. There's that mercenary house. Now, we can just take a look. He's already chosen his contract, by the way. Now, each time you do need to upgrade the contract to get the next level of unit. Um, so, he's got access to javelin throws right now. I can just take a look. Actually gets... Uh, Actually, it costs quite a bit there. 480 olive oil, but I think it. I think you get four units for that, if I'm not mistaken. We'll have to take a look once he does train something. But surprised he hasn't clicked anything. But you can see he's starting to build the aqueduct network to try and connect the cisterns together to increase that water level. Looks like there might be trade coming out here for Kanoki, looking to scale his economy. But he better get that up and running quickly because uh, Byzantines are kind of running away with that economy a little bit. Couple of horsemen diving in, looking to snipe a villager if they can. Villager just about gets out of there. Oh, yep, yeah, no, maybe. I mean, he might commit to that. No, he doesn't commit to it. Knights do get their charge attack and dishing out some damage. Might lose one villager on the wood. Wait, did he save that villager again? No, no, she died, I'm afraid. She perished, but the horsemen are very weak there. Overall, only taking one villager there, Crackety. So pretty good defense there for Kanoki and those French. I say French, but I mean, I guess they're still French. But the Royal Knights, they come in with a veteran upgrade now. Looking nice and shiny, chasing those horsemen away. I hope you guys have been enjoying the Castle Kim game so far recently, covering the new DLC content. I certainly have, and I really appreciate all you guys' support. I certainly do. It's been uh, phenomenal the last couple of months in Age of Empires 4, and really come to a peak today, I think. I've been super happy with these new civilizations, new strategies, new things to discuss and talk about. And, um, I, I mean, let me know what you think about the civilizations in the comment section below. I think the Byzantines are certainly an interesting one. The Japanese are nice to see. So is Jean d'Arc. I have to admit, I was a bit skeptical about having a hero unit. I have to admit, I was very skeptical. But actually, I'm really enjoying watching Jean d'Arc's faction play out. It's, it's actually really nice to see the abilities. It's something very different. I think that's what's really great about it. It's not something we've seen that very often. Well, actually, at all in Age of Empires. A lot of villagers are going to go down here. Four of them, quite likely. Wait, what? Yeah, I mean, they will go down. The spearmen just have to turn and fight. But yeah, that's a bit of a, a good pick off there by Crackety. Very exposed economy that Kanoki went for. He's got to be careful because that's the trade route as well. Look at the market. That's the neutral market that he's going for. He's got to be careful. Uh, does have mana times though being in the castle age, so it's a decent approach because he's got some crossbows as well as ranged attack. The knights will chase their horsemen. The mana times will chase the spearmen. And uh, the French should be safe here. He's got the tech up, right? But the trouble is, so do now the Byzantines. He's going to get the great, the golden horn tower rather. What this does is it periodically produces unlocked mercenary units for free. So uh, it's pretty nice to get those little units trickling out. And uh, the, the amount that you can produce, um, the value of the units, increases with the system's influence. So we've got to get a system there if you can. See a bit of aggression. The knight's still chasing the horseman. And the man of still chasing the spin. Actually, you know what? To be honest, this kind of uh, movement around the map here is actually benefiting Crackety, right? Because, I mean, sure, he will lose a couple of the units here and there. He might even pick off a couple of uh, traders, which is kind of a good pick off. But what this does is it keeps premium castle age units out of his base. Like, the last thing the Byzantines want right now are these mana times in this base. It allows Crackety here to get to that next stage. He's got to the castle age, might scale some economy from there, or just try and push some military, because it's going to be... Oh, he's going to be raiding here nicely on the gold vein. I'm not sure if he gets a villager. He must have textiles here, it seems, Kanoki. No, he doesn't, actually, interestingly enough. Does lose one horseman. Couple of villages idle, though. The knight's going to charge in. Should take care of that. In any case, back at home. I'm sure that will get cleared up. Back at home. At water level 2. There's still 2,100 olive oil in the bank. Holy moly. 
just about to connect that system together. I love, I love these aqueducts. I've got to say, how they go across buildings like that. Oof, going to look so nice. Lots of base building coming out for sure. So he's actually cured something up. Yeah, there we are. He's going to go for the camel. So he was actually holding those olive oil for camel riders. And, and this is what I'm saying. This is so such a nice mechanic. Because it gives them the flexibility to choose different units, right? And it makes sense to go for camel riders. Because they'll do great against the veteran royal knights. So, I mean, they'll do decent. Especially with camel arnies, right? That little bonus that camels get. It's going to be nice, for sure. Crossbows behind the manatars. Manatars going to try and torch the palisades down. Should get through quite easily. Jeanne Marc following in behind. She's actually not leveled up just yet. So that's an interesting one. Not chosen between the champions, champions or the riders, champions just yet. Might be close there though. We'll have to see. Breaks through. This is a bit of a problem for Crackety. There's a lot of units here. Castle Age units. 33 versus 13. Crackety has been sleeping a little bit on unit production. Does have a couple of cataphracts, but this is not going to be enough. This could be very dangerous for Kakadu here, but he does have a great economy. 75 economy units versus 48. He needs to keep them alive if he can. Because he's going to be under pressure. They do start to retreat. A couple of camel riders. That will help, but it won't be enough. Especially with the crossbows in play for Kanoki. He's diving in a little bit on the wood line. Keeping villagers idle. 17, 20 of them. 23. This is a good push here for Kanoki. He's behind an economy, though, so he kind of has to. Has to do a bit more damage than he's done so far, though, you feel. Now, Jean d'Arc might use a couple of abilities. Does have the ability to divinely restore health on these units. Could be a good time to use it in combat. Could also use the Q ability, the Divine Arrow. There it is. There's the Divine Restoration. Now, did you guys see that red Q? That is actually the trample damage coming in from the Cataphract. Charges through, dealing 10 damage to each unit it goes through. And overall, I think it's going to be okay for Crackety. Like, he's fighting underneath the town center. A couple of javelin throwers there. Uh, mostly camels, but I mean, he's losing a lot. I think Kanoki might come on top of this fight, but the reinforcements are certainly in the favor of the Byzantines. This is going to be quite important, this fight. It looks like Kanoki should win it. And this is bad for Kraken. He's only got two military. Could this be an early, early game? I'm not sure. I mean, the Byzantines, they do have a mechanic. Well, they do seem like a civilization that can survive through tough times. Kraken is going to have to do just that. It's definitely going to have to survive through tough times. But that's what's happening right now. And the time's going to work their way through. Going to idle a lot of the economy. I mean, to be fair, it's not all that much. Eight of them. And the times might need to split up a little bit. Could be starting to produce some barracks. Interesting choice. Maybe man of times of his own for the Byzantines. Does have the... Well, I say uh, man of times. I really mean Varangian guards. It's a unique unit for them. That's exactly what's happening. Manatom's picking off a villager, maybe. Can't keep up. The Manatom's a bit slow here. Does get there in the end. Bit of a havoc here in the Byzantines' base. A couple of knights trickling in as well, and keeping 19 villagers idle is not what Crackety would want. Villager count has dropped down to 63, has lost 28 economy units. Just need to check something in the minimap. What's that? A random villager. Holy moly, what's that villager doing there? Could be up to no good. Again, Olive Groves are idle. 24 villages are idle now. This is a great attack by Kanoki, but he's starting to lose those units. Slowly but surely. He does have wedge rivets, which is certainly great for the range of armor. Now, so slowly but surely, though, Crackley is starting to get a foothold back in his base and is going to send those villages back to work again. Still has an economy unit surplus, but trade is starting to establish. Let's just take a look at how much trade is coming in. 53 gold. Not too shabby. That's toggled on to, uh, well, none of these yet. Ah, so that's what that cheeky villager was up to. Going to be looking to Palisade Wall, that trade uh, activity, as much as he possibly can. Uh, quite a hard transition of olive groves. Now, the olive groves, they do cost wood, of course, 60 wood. Things have quietened down now. And it was good raiding there by Kanoki, but it almost feels like he didn't achieve all as much as he would want to. Didn't get enough kills, you feel. I think Crackety here with the G-Town Center was just a little bit too far ahead. Villagers do take care of that for Kanoki. He needs to be careful, though. There's quite a lot of army here, Varangian guards and the javelin throwers. But there we are. There's the next tier of Jean d'Arc as the mounted archer. Let's take a look. Okay, went for the champion side of things. So there's the uh, ability she can call three champions to her side. 
There's, of course, a cooldown on that. Jean d'Arc just chilling in the middle of the map. It might be a time where actually the French, or I should say Jean d'Arc, won't be too displeased as the direction of the game's going because she does have trade set up. And that will scale quite nicely. But the trouble is the Byzantine's economy has been alive for quite a while and it's been kicking for a while. And he might start to pump out units because he's spending the olive oil. He is spending the units and the olive oil. Look at that. 31 military now has bounced back. I feel like... I think the olive oil mechanic is actually quite nice. Like, he saved a lot of oil in the bank for units. And he started to produce them with the camels, right? When he needed them. It feels like now he's going full pedal to the metal, producing as much as he can. You'd love to see it. Is that water level 3 as well? And I think that's significant, right? Because he can start to really pump out. If you think about it, it's at water level 3, right? So he's getting 60% extra production speed on all of these buildings. And so he's going to be pumping. He's getting the blacksmith upgrades as well, and... Jean d'Arc has got to be careful. While she has trade, it might not be enough. She's going to head forward now just to see what value she can get. Does have a couple of abilities that she could use. I think players are going to have to try and get used to using them, actually, because this is maxed out, so it's worth using. So she has consecrated some buildings as well. Let's take a look where she's consecrated. Some barracks. Stable. You can actually consecrate the, uh, the town centre if you want cheap villagers. It's got the School of Cavalry consecrated as well going out to the middle of the map trying to gather that precious stone maybe to get a keep in the front lines that could be quite a nice way to defend this middle area but both players are in the castle age neither have gone for relics surprisingly enough focusing on other things trader numbers starting to build up but uh, the village count steadily rising with the second town center here for for crackety here it's really pumping out units and the trouble is he's got a lot of spearmen and cavalry right that's going to really hard counter those veteran royal knights Especially when you factor in Camelot Unease, which will cause the enemy horse cavalry units to deal 20% less damage. and That's not going to be what Jean d'Arc will want. As he heads forward. We do see a cataphract or two as well. The army split into two, trying to break in the north side with the palisades there. Just one cataphract, but it does look beautiful. Look at the uh, chainmail armor on that guy. Going to dive in. Oh, Jean d'Arc spots it. Oh, the spearmen do get a couple of good hits on the knights. I say spearmen, but they're actually called Limitani for the Byzantines. The Limitani are going to chase them through, and those knights are going to have to back off for now. But, well, the olive groves were idle for a couple of seconds. The villagers are heading back over to them now. And uh, we see a couple of knights do perish. The villagers go back onto the olive groves. And uh, he's pretty safe and secure here, Cracket. I mean, sure, there's knights in his base, but the villagers are, are running away with wheelbarrow. Obviously having that increased movement speed because of it. And it's got a lot of army back at home, right? He should be able to defend quite nicely. There's no real siege push coming out for Jean d'Arc with this army. But he, she is fighting on multiple fronts. And that could catch Crackety unawares at times. Got to be careful. The, the military number is looking pretty deadly. 71, especially with the defender's advantage. That's going to increase over time. And uh, it's looking a bit dicey here. Castle Age units versus Castle Age units. Good couple of counter units there. Spearmen against the veteran Royal Knights were coming in to play it does have a couple of crossbows i mean this is not a great fight for kanoki i don't think he has enough i think generally the man at arms will be okay for the for jean d'arc but there's still a cataphract there. there's a couple of heavy camels but here come the french for, uh well the jean d'arc's royal knights we saw the little trample effect coming in there the red hue around the cataphract it's gonna take the engagement here oh jean d'arc using her ability using the divine restoration healing up those units somewhat but taking a hill fight this is a problem for Jean d'Arc, for sure. She's taking the fight on the hill. She does have the high ground, but it doesn't really feel like she's got enough. Crackety here has got a lot of units. Limit and I, Varangian Guards sweeping through. There's quite a few mana times over for the French, but it does feel like the Varangian Guards taking good cost-effective trades. A couple of javelin throws on the back of that. They're probably not getting all that much value, but here come the camel riders from the back as well to join the fight. And it just feels like the defender's advantage is winning over, and there's so many teal units. Feels like Crackety should win this fight, and where does Jean d'Arc go from here? She's going to have to retreat, otherwise she might lose her life. Crackety here, up towards level 5. All the way down to 6 military units now, Jean d'Arc does have to back away, and she's behind on economy, behind on military. It's looking tough here. Does have that trade though, so if she can get another market or two, she's already got two I think. She might be able to hopefully pull her way back into the game, but look at the olive oil coming in for Crackety. 
Now it's going to be pumping into more units from the mercenary houses. As I say that, the beautiful cataphracts are starting to mount up. Take a look at them. They are looking good, guys. Now I feel like Krakadi might start to be aggressive, right? He's got a lot of wood in the bank and... Yeah, no real signs of looking to tech up. Doesn't really have the food economy for that, to be honest. So I think really at this point, it's probably best to be aggressive with the units that he has and the military that he has and just the economy that he has. It's looking good. Just camping that hill for now. Kanoki has to be careful. This could be the big push that we expected to see. And, well, Krakadi here. Moving forward with the cataphracts, they're looking very, very nice. Just taking on the position on that hill for now. Not rushing anything. Trying to build up a couple of more cataphracts. Let's take a look at the stats of these guys. 360 HP, 28 sword melee damage. Holy moly. That's pretty painful. In fact, in a man at arms has 155 HP. These guys have 360. Granted. They are on horseback. Oh, Kanoki trying to get a keep there. I'm not so sure about that, my friend. Krakadi, if he spots that, that could be problems. He does spot it. It's going to head in that position. Kanoki doesn't have any military here. This is a bit of an oversight to start building this without having the safety of units. And he's going to lose a lot of villagers. Does have a keep a little bit further behind that, but it's not going to be enough. He's going to lose the keep. He needs to delete the keep. Kanoki, delete the keep. Decides against it. Well, Krakadi's going to head forward to the base now. He's done damage and he wants to... Do it, dish out even more. He smelt blood. Crackity is not done just yet. It's going to head in forward. And if he takes the engagement now, he surely wins. 42 military versus 16. Kanoki's got to be careful. He might take the engagement. I'm not sure why, because he's not really in a position to do so. And, well, Crackity going to head forward with the military. Man at arms tanking on the front line. Trample damage coming in there. Great showcase of that ability. The Jeanne Arc hero unit fighting on the back lines, but it doesn't really feel like it's going to be enough. And now the Cataphrax is going to overrun the Byzantines. Should take the game on cliffside. Crackity here takes the win right in front of the Jean d'Arc's face. And well, it was a great game of Age of Empires for hopefully showcased a lot of the unique civilizations bonuses. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you'd like to see the Japanese Shinobi in action, click the end card on your screen right now. Take care and see you next time.